This is one of my favorite things to do with my class. And I don't get to do it much because as an activewear designer, I don't really do a whole lot with yarn dye wovens, which is probably why I like it so much. Anyway, there are programs that will create a plaid for you, but you can create the layout and the twill weave look right in Photoshop. So that's what we're gonna do today. Plaids can be created similarly to how you'd create a stripe but it requires a bit more thought because you're combining the warp and the weft yarns. I'm going to start with a five inch by five inch document at 150 DPI. And keep in mind that the size really doesn't matter as long as it's big enough to accommodate the repeat size you are planning to create. Starting with the warp, use the rectangle tool or the marquee tool to create the vertical yarns of your plaid. For this exercise, I'm going to use the marquee tool because it's quicker. But note that the advantage of using the rectangle tool is that you can more easily change the color of the stripe if you need to. Once you've completed the warp yarns, you're ready to create the weft yarns, which run horizontally. And you'll do this a little differently depending on whether you use the marquee tool or whether you've used the rectangle tool. If you've used the marquee tool, just create a new layer and start making your horizontal stripes. And for a simple plaid where the weft layout is the same as the warp layout, you can duplicate the layer and rotate it 90 degrees clockwise. If you've used the rectangle tool, Select all the layers with the warp stripes and create a smart object, which will consolidate all your stripes into one layer. Then begin making your weft stripes. And when you're done, make that into a smart object as well. To create a simple plaid here, right mouse click on the warp smart object and choose new smart object via copy. Then double click the new smart object, which will open a separate document and rotate the image 90 degrees. Save, and then close the document to see the layer update in your original plaid file. Now, let's create the weave texture. Create a new document that's four by four pixels. Make sure your units are pixels, not inches or centimeters or any other measurement you might normally use. Set the resolution to 150 dpi and set the background color to transparent. Show your grid and in the Photoshop preferences, set up the grid to show grid lines every one pixel. Set the foreground color to black. Select the pencil tool and change the cursor size to one pixel. Begin creating a twill weave pattern by clicking individual pixel squares, starting with the lower left corner. Your pattern should look like my finished pattern here. Once you're done, define and save the pattern by going to Edit, Define Pattern. Name it if you want and hit OK. Close the document, you don't need to save it, and switch back to your plaid file. To add the weave texture, start by rasterizing the weft layer if you've used smart objects. Right mouse click over the smart object and choose rasterize layer. If you've used the marquee tool to create your stripes, you can skip this step. Next, create a separate pattern fill and choose the new twill texture you created from the pattern options. and then rasterize this layer by right mouse clicking over the layer and choosing rasterize layer. To add the weave texture, hover over the thumbnail of the layer, press the control or command key and click. This will select the pixels of the twill texture layer. Next, hide the layer and switch to the weft layer. Press backspace or delete, whichever appears on your keyboard to create the textured appearance on the weft layer and then deselect so you can see the appearance of your finished plaid. Lastly, trash the pattern fill layer. 
One last thing I like to do, and this is totally optional, and that is to change the blending mode on the weft layer to multiply and reduce the opacity to about 40 or 50%. It's definitely not something you have to do, but I think it gives the plaid a bit more definition and depth. And now all you need to do is define the pattern so that you have it available to fill a sketch. Thanks for watching this week's tutorial. If you are new to digital fashion design, make sure you check out the links in the description for more information about my classes in Illustrator and Photoshop for fashion and to get some great freebies. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share this video if you found it helpful. Have a fantastic week and I'll see you next time.